Hi guys, it's Connie from Faf Designs. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint and I'm going to show you how to achieve this apothecary look in the tutorial today using Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint. Uh, behind me is the piece that I am going to uh, paint today. It's a rather large and very heavy sort of low coffee table chest with, I don't know if you can see, loads and loads and loads of small individual drawers. So I'm going to upcycle this into uh, a sort of industrial style piece. Um, I've done the style a couple of times before and I always get asked about the techniques so I'm going to run you through what I'm going to do. First things first, we're going to start cleaning. So, um, I use Dixie Bell products because obviously I'm a brand ambassador for them. And in this bucket I have a solution of, I thought I put it to one side, I did, it's over here, of white lightning. This is a granulated cleaner which dissolves into water. So a little part goes a long way. Um, you roughly add two tablespoons of white lightning per gallon of hot water. So that gives you an indication of how far this stuff goes. And it's really potent, hence me wearing gloves. Uh, and it basically is going to take off all the years worth of grease, grime, dirt, cleaning products, any kind of residue that's on the surface of that piece. It's a really important step. You don't want to you don't want to skip it because if you do, you are going to probably have paint adherence issues later on down the line. So make sure you give your pieces a really good clean, inside out, upside down. I will probably be fast forwarding this bit because you don't want to see me scrubbing in real time um, but basically what I use is a solution of like I say warm water in a bucket and I use these microfiber cloths I buy these in bulk off Amazon I'll pop the link below um, but you can reuse these loads and loads of times uh, I just shove mine in the washing machine when they're getting really grubby and um, basically they come out like new so you can get loads and loads of use out of them and I also use them for buffing wax and all kinds of things uh, cleaning the house very occasionally um, <clears throat> so that is basically where I start with all of my pieces So I've taken all of the drawers out, <coughs> there are 12 of them, um, so excuse me sitting like this on the floor, I, uh, I can't really figure out a better way to sit. So I take all of the drawers out when I'm cleaning, um, I do it methodically so I take them all out and it's also a good idea to give inside a clean because you can see how dirty that is in there, there's dust and there's a few cobwebs. Um, so I'm going to give all of that a good clean because the last thing you want to do, especially if you're selling your pieces, is for the customer to receive it and all dirt and grime to be in there. It's unlikely that they'll take the drawers out, but if they ever do, it just doesn't look great. So I'm going to give everywhere a really good clean when I do the drawers as well. So each individual small drawer, I'll obviously do the front, which is the surface that's going to be painted. I do the sides, I turn it over, I do underneath because that gets a build up of dust and getting in all the corners. Can you see how much dirt has just come off that little tiny drawer? I do the sides, I also make sure I do the back and I do the inside as well because quite often with second hand furniture that's um, dusty and can have stains and all kinds of things in the drawers so uh, it's always a good idea to just completely clean first because you know you're starting with a blank canvas then um, and also it gives you an opportunity to really look at the drawers and see if there's any issues if you just went ahead and 
nearly dropped it. If you went ahead and just cleaned the surface of this inside the piece, you wouldn't know if the back had any issues, if the sides were requiring any sort of repair work. So it's a good idea to take the drawers out and give them a, a once over when you're cleaning just to make sure there's sort of no um, important repair work that needs doing or structural repair work that needs doing to your piece. So that's the piece cleaned with white lightning. Now what you've got to do is rinse it off. That's to take any cleaning residue away. Again, to stop that from causing any issues with paint adherence. And um, also, I thought I'd mention, a lot of people ask why I, I'm not sure what this hand's doing, um, why I clean before I sand. Um, the reason being is you can actually drive whatever is on the surface of that piece, so whether it's polish or wax or grease or grime, you can drive that into the grain of the wood, um, which again is going to create issues with paint adhering to your surface. So um, what you need to do is clean, always clean first, then sand. Um, the only exception to that rule is if you have a waxed piece of furniture, in which case you need to, again, the hand, uh, you need to remove the wax from the surface first, then clean, and then sand. And I do have another video on my YouTube channel which explains how you remove uh, wax off a piece. So I have got a bucket with fresh, warm, clean water in and the microfiber cloth which I've rinsed out. I'm just going to go and rinse, rinse the piece now. Um, everywhere that I've cleaned I'm going to rinse off. Okay, so while I'm leaving the filler to dry, uh, the Dixie mud, I should say, um, I'm going to scuff sand the rest of the piece. Uh, the reason I scuff sand is basically because um, it gives better adherence to the paint. It basically roughs the surface up and gives the paint something to grip onto. And because I sell my pieces, I always make sure that I don't skip that step because I want peace of mind that the paint isn't going to come off in my customer's home or there aren't going to be any problems further down the line with it. Okay, so my camera ran out of battery. And um, while it was charging, I did the rest, the sanded the rest of the drawer fronts, and I also have applied the base coat all over except for the front of the piece, which I'm going to show you now. Um, so we want to build up layers of texture because when we distress at the sort of one of the last steps we do, um, we want to see loads and loads of colours peeping through. So the base colour that I'm going to use is drop cloth. It's um, it's like a warm, sort of creamy off-white. Um, I'm just going to plop some of that in a pot. Then I'm going to use sea spray. I absolutely love sea spray. I use it quite a lot in, in, in my work. Um, and it's basically a powder that you add <laughs> that you add to paint. You get a little um, scoop in it. Um, and it's a powder that you add into the paint and it makes it thicker. It also um, means that when you apply it on, on your piece in various different ways, it holds that texture because it's thicker. So you can apply, um, you can apply it however you like. Uh, you can apply it with a spatula. You can apply it with a brush. It just depends on the effect that you want. I'm just mixing it up until we've got a sort of a sort of a paste. Gonna need more paint, I think, in there. 
usually what I say to do, I do the opposite anyway, but I'd normally add um, small increments of sea spray because it goes quite a long way so you don't need a lot and I've just done the exact opposite and put a load in so I'm just mixing it up I'm not adding any water to this because I want it to be thick I want it to hold the texture when I apply it onto the piece and you can see behind me the piece hasn't it's not full coverage there are still areas where you can see the wood um, coming through but that's that's okay because the finished look is going to be quite distressed and aged anyway so if you see parts of the wood showing through that's all part of it and I'm going to use a premium chip brush I always have an absolute load of these in my toolkit because they're really really good for when you don't want to use your really nice brushes um, if you're going to be using like sea spray or um, you know sort of stuff where you might sort of clog your nice synthetic brushes up these are really good and they're really inexpensive but they actually last a really long time so all i'm going to do is apply the sea spray in a stippling motion like this Okay, so that is the base coat gone on. Um, now with sea spray, it may increase the drying time slightly um, because obviously you're applying the product a lot thicker than what you normally would do if you were just painting. Um, so I'm gonna keep checking on back on this to make sure that it's completely dry before we do the next step because I don't want the paint colors to mix. I want them to be layered. So it's gotta be completely dry before you do your next step. Okay, so the base coat of drop cloth and sea spray is dry. Um, you see why I wanted it completely dry before we moved on to the next stage, because the next colour I'm going to use is Honky Tonk Red. Um, so if those would have mixed, it would have made a pink. Kind of spoiled the look that I'm going for. So I'm just using um, the flat large brush, the synthetic flat large brush from Dixie Belle. Um, because I want to cover this area quickly. This is a completely dry brush. I'm not adding any water to this at all. I'm not using a water mister. And I'm not actually looking for total coverage either. So I just want to get the paint on. And the idea is, when this is distressed at a later date, you will be able to see all of these different colours coming through the final, coming through the final uh, colour, as it were, the final layer. I'm just putting my paint on quite randomly. It's fairly thick in areas but again in some places I'm almost dry brushing it over the texture so that you can see some of the drop cloth coming through underneath just do that side okay so again this needs to dry completely before we can move on to the next stage so I'm going to leave this for a good couple of hours just to make sure that when I apply the next layer then I'm going to mix. Okay so the honky tonk red has dried completely. Um, the next colour we're going to use which you can see here is the gulf. This is a bright sort of turquoisey aquary colour. This really contrasts against the red. I find it works really well for this type of effect. So I am just going to use um, a mini, synthetic mini, just to apply this. It's gone quite thick in the tub, which is perfect for this because I don't want full coverage over the red. So you'll see what I mean when I start painting. So 
So if I bring you in a touch, you can see patches of the red through the gulf. So the honky tonk red is showing through the gulf. And that's fine because the final look is going to be really, really distressed. So we're going to, by varying the, the gulf, we're going to make sure that it looks authentic when we distress it. It's not going to be one solid coat. It's, um, so I'm brushing it in various different ways. Uh, so in some areas it's full coverage, some areas you can see the honky tonk red coming through. And then there are even areas where you can see a bit of the base colour, which is the drop cloth showing through. As well as distressing it, um, what I'm going to do is just rub this. This is a beeswax block and all it does is help to resist the paint. So, um, round the draw edges, I'm just running this really, really lightly around. And what it helps to do is when the, um, the blue colour is applied over the red, it acts as a resist between those two layers of paint. So when it's distressed, you get more of a sort of chippy, um, authentic look. So I've already done this, but all I do is just run it around the edges really, really lightly. And you can do this with a candle, um, anything that's oil based so that it'll resist because obviously oil and water don't mix so anything that's going to resist the water based paint will work so again we've got to leave that to dry completely before we do the final colour, which is going to be caviar. Okay, changed angle slightly because being low down on the ground is, is not doing my back any good. So I've put it on this bench, so I'm hoping you can still see. So we have left the gulf to dry overnight, that's the blue. The next colour and the final coat that we're going to, the final colour I should say, not the final coat, the final colour that we're going to apply is caviar. Um, you'll notice there's a drawer missing here. That's because I've just done a quick live on Facebook on this technique. So I borrowed a drawer. Uh, so I will be putting that back shortly. But I'm going to do a coat of caviar. Um, I'm using the oval medium because it covers really quickly because it's a large brush. And I've also got my mister bottle with water in just to help the paint cover we're going to be doing two coats of caviar so I'm going to do one leave it to dry and then get another one on because I want full coverage of this black colour Okay, so we're doing the second coat of caviar. Uh, this coat has covered pretty well, but I'm gonna just do a second coat because I do want it to be pure black. Excuse if you can hear any noise in the background. Don't mind that, that's just my other half attempting to use a hoover. He uh, needs a little bit more practice, I think. Okay, so that's two coats of caviar. I've got to leave it to dry now before we can distress and hopefully reveal all those colours that we layered earlier on. Okay, so the second coat of caviar has completely dried. I've taken the drawers out, if you can see behind me. And the next thing we're going to do is distress all of those layers back. So at the minute it's quite textured to feel and we want to make it a little bit smoother. We don't want that bobbly feeling. Um, so I'm going to run my electric sander over it and, and then I will go back in with a um, piece of sandpaper and just define where I want it distressed more. Okay, so I've just sanded back the, um, the outer bits of the drawers and you can see where all of the layers of colours were added 
on top of one another and we've used the wax resist underneath there's areas of honky tonk red there's little peeps of the gulf and there's also the um, drop cloth coming through in areas as well and in some areas it's gone right back to the wood which I'm okay with because the wood underneath is quite a nice dark tone um, just a word of warning if you are using an electric sander just use a light hand this is I think this is an 80 grit on here um, obviously the more abrasive the easier it's going to be to distress but you don't want to go all the way back to the bare wood you don't want to take all of the layers of paint off so I was just using that with a really really light hand not pressing on too much at all and I've, I've emphasized the edges of the drawers because if you think if this was aged you know if this is an old piece that had aged the edges of the drawers would be where the wear and tear was the most so I focused the distressing around the edges I'm going to do the all the drawers now and then I'll I'll pop them back in so you can have a look what it looks like so the reason I've taken the the drawers out is because I obviously have got some edges here that need tidying up and I want to distress each drawer individually I don't want it to look uniform I don't want it to look artificially done and I also want to be able to get the corners so the edges is where I'm going to concentrate my electric sander the most um, so that's why I take the drawers out to distress and not do them in situ So hopefully you can see the effect that I'm trying to achieve by um, sanding and because we um, added the base layers irregularly it's distressing irregularly easy for me to say um, so in some areas you can see more blue in some areas you can see more of the drop cloth and then we've got the red peeking through as well so it's really important to make sure that when you do put your sea spray on it's not all uniform and the same because otherwise you'll get a really uniform look when you distress right that's all the drawers distressed and back in um, so you can see behind me the effect that I'm trying to the effect that I'm trying to achieve with the um, with the building up of the layers and then the distressing back, you get to see all of those colours. Don't worry if your paint looks dull when you've sanded it. When you top coat it, we're going to use wax um, on this piece. When you top coat it, that colour will come right back. And a couple of tips about distressing. So the um, more abrasive the sandpaper you use whether you use electric or by hand the more abrasive sandpaper the more distressed the piece is going to be that obviously sounds like common sense if you use a really soft sandpaper like a sanding sponge or a sanding pad sort of 220 grit it's going to create a much softer look than if you were to use something like I've done like an 80 grit or 120 grit so you can achieve different effects with different sandpaper right so we have painted sanded distressed so I'm going to use um, best Dang waxing clear and I'm going to add some brown to give the black some real depth and age um, but first we just need to make sure there's no dust so when you sand it um, always give it a rub down with a microfiber cloth or a rag to remove the dust from the surface of the piece otherwise that's going to get trapped in your top coat and obviously that's not going to be a good look okay so this is best dang wax in clear it looks white it might go on a little bit milky but it dries clear and i apply mine most of the time with a dish sponge especially when it's a flat area like this if there's lots of recesses in detail I'll use a brush but this gives you a really thin even coat without any streakiness so all I'm doing is adding some of the product onto the sponge and these are just um, dish sponges that I buy in bulk and 
they just give a really really good even coat of wax on the surface so you can just see there how it's brought all the colours to life um, you can really see the punchiness of the red and the turquoise contrasting against the black um, and it's worth saying that if you're using wax that doesn't mean that you can't use a top coat over the top of it because this is water based if you want to offer some more protection on your piece you can wax and then you can add a top coat over the top or you could top coat and then add a wax over the top so you can layer up the clear coats and the waxes with Dixie Belle because it's all water based. Okay, next step after we've done the clear wax is the brown wax. I'm going to use um, the Best Dang brush and I'm going to apply it in a sort of swirly motion and then I'm going to buff the excess off. Right, it is time to add the handles. I have quite a lot of drawers, so as you can see there, I've already done most of them. But um, I just thought I'd show you how I how I put handles on, it's quite simple. So I pre-drill the holes first. I use a template and pre-drill the holes. And then um, just means that you're gonna get a you're not going to round any screws off or anything, which I've done before. These handles, card holder handles, apothecary style handles, I've just thrown the screws on the floor. Um, these handles are my absolute favourite, I love them, I love the look of them, I like that sort of industrial edge they give to pieces and these are from a UK company. UK company um, called Nobbles and Bobbles. I will pop the link in the comments um, below, in the description below, so that you can go and find them if you like. Um, the good thing about these is that they have to do, they actually do a couple of different sizes. So because these drawer fronts are actually sm quite small, um, these fit perfectly on the front and they act, they do a larger they do a larger one as well which I have used on other pieces um, and they do a couple of different finishes they do black and they do antique and I think they do silver off the top of my head so check them out they're a really good company As a final touch for the handles what I thought I would do is I've got this really old book it's it was from a charity shop it's practically falling apart well it is falling apart they were practically giving it away and I flicked through because I have a bit of a thing for old books quite good for staging and things like that and it's got some really nice botanical drawings in it. So I took it, but it's also quite a lot of text in it as well. Um, so I thought I would use the text pages for inserts on the handles. It just gives it a little bit of character. The pages are really faded and worn. Just talking about plants and flowers, really. Um, but because they're really faded and worn it kind of fits this look that I'm going for so I've cut one out and I've used that as a, as like a template and then basically just cut the rest out with scissors that's one gone so clumsy today so I'm just using the previous one as a as a template and using my kitchen scissors to cut them out with and then they should just slide in I think I've made that one a bit too 
a little bit too tall. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the very bottom. It's very technical this. I'm joking. And it just fits in there. Like that. There we go, so you can see it kind of just adds to the effect of the old sort of apothecary style we're going for. Now we just need to get some pictures of it staged and we're done. Thanks for watching the tutorial today. I hope it was useful and you found it entertaining, if not anything else. I will be creating loads more content on my YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching.